hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at how we can extend our type ORM's new version inside the nest application so now in my previous video of nest.js i showed you how we can configure type ORM latest version along with its migrations inside nest.js because things have changed a bit and after that i got a lot of requests around and you know, how do i and do the basic queries and stuff like that so i decided why don't we port the existing application to the latest version of type ORM. now i was playing with the existing code base and i was trying to upgrade it to the latest version but it was a bit tricky there were too many files to change and i was anyways willing to change the format that i have used i was trying to get rid of the repository pattern so i decided why don't we quickly port the application to a fresh installation so in this video what i'm going to do is pretty much copy the existing code into my new code base and see what all things break and to believe believe me not much has changed except a few syntactical things should be an easy migration so let's get started so i have already shown you in my previous video how i had configured type orm inside my nest.js application and we were running the migrations and stuff like that now in this video what we will do is i have created this user module and inside the user module i have my you know, module file which is saying that you know there are controllers there is a provider right i already have the controller over here and we have the user service and then i have entity and dto so this is quite a bit similar to what i had in my initial project i have copy pasted quite a few things and hence i'll quickly walk you through the code which is responsible right now for me to make use of the create user post request and you know, make an entry in the database so first of all i have this user entity where i have my id which is a primary generated column i have my name which is a where care i have email which i have created a condition that it has to be unique there's a password field created at updated at and this class does extend the base entity and last but not the least what i'm doing over here is before the insert happens i am always ensuring that i am hashing the password before it is even save to the database so as you can see the set password method which is you know a function which we can call on any field for example if we want to do something with the email then it will be set email if we want to do anything with the name you guessed it right it will be set name and you will get the value so what i am doing is using the bcrypt libraries hash function to hash the password and the salt round right now is 10 okay so with this done the entity has been defined if i show you my sql pro you will see the database has a few fields for example id name email password created at and updated at all right that is done now let's look at the controller so the controller over here first of all it's a class with the decorator controller and this user means all the routes inside this controller will follow the pattern which is localhost 3000 and then slash user now this root url which is a post you know to handle a post method it will call the create method on the controller i'm expecting body parameters and what i'm doing is i'm running it through the validation pipe i already have the create user dto the dto was created when i created that you know module with the resources but i'll still show you this is where the validation is happening i have the class validator in a module so i have a few basic rules over here for example the name the email the password you know these three needs to be not empty and then i have an additional check of email and length as well 
So the controller will get this DTO object. Okay, we know what is the shape of create user DTO, and then I am passing that to the service file. So I I don't need this. I'll just get rid of that. So I'm passing it to the service file. Obviously, the service file is going to create the user. So let's go over here. What we are getting is the create function which takes the create user DTO which is being passed from the controller to the service, right? And then we create this model instance. So we have user equals new user, name equals this, email, password. And as you can see, I'm not hashing the password over here because I'm already doing that inside my entity. Then I run the save command or the save function on the model. So this is persisted to the database and then return back. And this in place, as you can see, this code has not changed much. Rather, I have simplified things because now the repositories and stuff like that are not required anymore. I'm directly doing this inside the service and returning the data. So this is available over here. The validations are running because of the class validator rules that we have. And if it fails, then we have the entity, unprocessable entity error as well. So let's see this in action. I'll go to my rapid API client and I'll hit control enter. And I can see I got a 422 unprocessable entity because I'm not sending the password and I don't see any over any error over here. However, the moment I click on the password, as you can see, this is the data which is going. Okay. And if I now hit control enter, it returned a 201 created response, which has the model which got created because you can see there is a created at updated at and the password is, is hashed as well. ID is one. And if I show you my database, we do get the entry over here as well. So all in all, not much has changed, but still we are very quickly able to get the basic functionality of creating user in place by quickly moving the code from our previous project. So yeah, that's about it guys. That's how easy it is to move the code from the previous project to this new type ORM based NestJS application. I don't see too much difference in the entire working and with this only service you know pattern things are getting quite simplified because now the controller and service can directly do its thing we don't need the repository right so i'm quite excited if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel